Mr. A back here, going to finish off the third video for F583, the upcoming exam on work and leisure. And what I'm going to do to, uh, for this video is I'm going to go down to my section three. So I've explained to you if you want to buy this exam pack, you can follow the link in the video description. Uh, it's about 20 pounds. You log on, you can pay with PayPal. Um, should be relatively straightforward. You get a copy of the PDF and it's sent to you immediately. So check it out if you're interested in getting the rest of these essays. Now, not all of them are in the pack, just the ones that are in bold that you can see. And that's for section one, which is the market structure competitive behavior. For section two, again, these bold ones, the yellow are the highlighted ones. These are the ones I've done videos for on YouTube. So I wanted to do one from each section. And for uh, section three, I'm going to do a using example to explain what is meant by labor market failure. So I'm going to look for labor market failure. Uh, hold on, let's look for using examples to explain what is meant by, okay, and that's going to take us to our essay. Let me read this through with you. I'm going to talk about what I see happening as I go, and then I'll mark it for you, and you can see how the structure comes together. So what I'm looking for in an explain essay is different than what I'm looking for in a discuss. This thing only has to hit level three, which means you need content application analysis. Content, you hammer it out usually in the introduction, and you give key terms, and you establish your knowledge throughout. But generally, when you put in the key terms, you're earning your content marks. So that's generally like a gimme. But the application analysis is a little bit harder. So I'm going to go through this here and point that out to you. Labor market failure occurs when the market forces of demand and supply do not result in an efficient allocation of labor resources. The evidence for this can occur in numerous forms. The most obvious is a surplus of some forms of labor, then a shortage of others. For instance, workers may be in jobs that they are not best suited for or may have a lack of education and training which is preventing this and therefore wage rates being above or below their equilibrium rate. Clear definition of labor market failure. So let's jump ahead. Uh, there are many causes of labor market failure, one of these being the immo immobility of labor. This comes in two forms, geographical and occupational. Occupational immobility may occur if the worker does not have a sufficient level of human capital to apply for certain jobs that are available. Now this is an application point, and to take it further, you have to kind of answer the question, so what, right? Op occupational immobility occurs when you don't have enough skills, right? But, but so what, how does that contribute to market failure? So for instance, the job may be for a brain surgeon, which requires a lot of human capital in contrast to jobs such as a cleaner. Therefore, the supply of labor for these jobs will prove to be inelastic. In addition to this, the wage rate of that certain job may not be high. Therefore, workers may feel they can use their skills elsewhere with a higher wage rate as it may not be compensating. Though this depends upon how transferable the workers' skills are. Occupational immobility would therefore cause labor market failure as it could increase unemployment due to this. So this is explaining why uh, human capital, how that factors into occupational immobility. And then you have to think, right, if the government is looking to we're only looking to explain what is meant by labor market failure. We're not looking to provide solutions, but occupational immobility of labor means it's difficult for people to switch between between occupations, like for, um, let's say, a teacher to become a, a doctor or uh, a nurse to become a doctor, bringing it a little bit closer. Right? The easier you can make these transitions, the more government facilitates that, then the lower likelihood of labor market failure. And so they've explained in this paragraph what the reason for occupational immobility is. Geographical immobility may occur if workers are unable to move out to take on certain jobs due to pecuniary and non-pecuniary factors. They may have strong family ties, such as being lone parents with dependent children, therefore may find it difficult to find schooling and education for them. Also, the cost of living plays a major part as house prices and basic necessities may be high, making it different for the worker to relocate. Instead, they could experience poverty due to this. This would cause labor market failure as workers are not making full use of their skills and potential, and therefore the economy would be operating inside the PPF curve. So geographical mobility is not being able to uh, get a job because you can't move out to it, or maybe you, you know, you, you aren't aware that it's out there. So let's see what they tackle in this next paragraph. Another reason why geographical immobility exists is because workers may have a lack of information, and therefore imperfect information is passed on to the individual. And this is another cause of labor market failure. So that's the application point, the L3 is coming. This is because, that's now in the analysis. Essentially, this point means, all right, this is because it would lead to individuals being unable to make informed decisions as to whether they should take the job or not. 
they may also be in a job that is not using their full potential and so are underproducing. This would lower their marginal revenue product of labor and show inefficient allocation of resources. And this can be shown through PPF. Therefore, labor market failure would exist. Now, they've explained why labor market failure exists and they've provided examples, right? We've got some pretty decent examples. I think it's pretty well written. It's brief, but it's, it's well written. It's balanced, I would say, a little bit more towards the side of geographical immobility. Could probably use some explanation further of occupational immobility. But you don't need to explain solutions. You could talk about why it occurs. And they've done put that partially. So I think they meet quite a lot of the requirements for this essay. So it includes three key causes of labor market failure and explains the concept clearly and thoroughly. Some slight errors in writing, but the writer still achieves high marks. To improve the argument, we need to be more solid and accurate throughout. And what does that mean? What do I mean when I say solid and accurate? Just provide clear explanation in that um, occupational immobility. Spell it out a little bit clearer. Give us more situations. Don't just give us one instance of uh, occupational immobility. And the same will go for geographical immobility. It seems like they did a lot more on this side. So out of 15 marks, I would score this essay a 13 out of 15.